Hey everyone, Greasy Mojo here. I've crawled out of my pit once again to unleash low-key fetish for bait under the guise of making trifusion designs. Truly, my natural state. The first time I recorded this, I lost all my audio, so I'm sort of pissed. Anyways, I'm going to skip all the fluff this time around and run lean. If you want a detailed explanation of what exactly I'm doing in these videos, and what a trifusion is, and other pointless crap I try to scream about. There's literally five other videos you can and you can watch and should watch to get the rundown on all that. Show them to your friends, your family, and co-workers so they too can listen to a creepy loser talking about drawing fit animal women and mouth breathing. Anyway, shameless self prog over. On to part six, the one where everyone dies and the timelines reset. Or in the last one here, folks, the last fusion before the final fusion. And this one turns out not bad. I end up enjoying it quite a bit, unlike the last one. Hopefully y'all enjoy this one too, as I'm guessing y'all have seen it at this point since you clicked on the link in the post. So let's just get into it. Same deal as before. In the beginning, I take the two characters and do a traceover of them trying to plot out the designs, seeing where they break thinking of interesting ways I can fuse them together. I try to identify the big problems here. Say, what is her weapon going to look like? That's a nasty mess. How exactly, how the fuck do you fuse a gun and a staff? Do you tape it to the end? How do you fire the fucking thing? Can you still hit people with it? Stupidity aside, what I'm getting at is that that's a mental problem. You can't really work through that just by fusing form and design, unless you're specifically trying to brainstorm and seeing if your brain can latch on to an idea from just looking at abstract shapes you're drawing. Entirely valid, but that's a different thing. There are problems that arise when doing a fusion that need to be tackled mentally before beforehand. I do this before I even start drawing. I can't really show you this as it would just be me staring at the screen for long periods of time, which would appear to y'all as nothing happening, which would make for a very boring video. So I have a part beforehand where I try to establish a direction for this new character, personality-wise, looks-wise, design-wise, and I smooth out all the largest problems that jump out at me. I'm just trying to create something... A loose idea, a target to aim at, but not so strict that I can't even shift away from it over the course of the drawing. Once I have a general feel for what I'm doing, I can get down uh, to working and designing it. Now, I'll admit, I should have been more flexible in the previous fusions, and probably this one as well. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, as it's always been at least a month since I've last thought about what I've said in one of these videos. But I came up with this notion of the sin of original idea, where an artist or a creator can become so enamored with uh, one of their ideas or concepts, and they, they'll just refuse to change it, even when it becomes so apparent that the idea is not that great, or it's just not going to work out. I know this is something that everyone has in some way, though I suppose that everyone can interpret it differently. You get excited about an idea, and you don't want to admit that it's flawed in a way. You've got a parent-guardian mentality towards it. You want to see it finalized so bad to grow up and be on the screen. And The reason it's not working is that you can't do it right. If you could just do it right or change this tweak that it would just it would just work and it would all come together and it'd be the best damn drawing ever but sometimes an idea is just flawed or a part of it just needs to be removed for the better of the whole this is why we do pre-work this is where we get messy this is where we develop numerous different ideas and sketches and then abandon most of those because they suck you just punch those shitty orphan ideas in the face you don't need them you only want the best ideas, which means you're going to have to say no a lot and spend a lot of your time fucking up and just thinking. That's all pre-work, and pre-work is good. Don't stick with your ideas all the way you do through like I always fucking do. 
tackle the problems that arise as soon as possible. The larger the problem, the sooner you need to get in there and deal with it. Otherwise, it's going to become extremely embedded in the drawing. Now, there is a, a flip side to this concept. This concept, uh, the sin of original idea. It sounds like an edgy anime name. But it's sort of a yin-yang deal. It's okay to be excited about an idea. Because that, that's motivation. That's the carrot at the end of the stick. Realizing a very cool design, a pose, a background, a rendering, whatever. is It's just good artistic catharsis. So don't be afraid of wanting your idea to succeed. Trying to do so is practice. Just like realizing that your idea sucks is practice. It's all self-awareness of your process and your goals. My concept uh, for this image, this character, was a, a leader type. Um... A military commander with a sort of future formal aesthetic look to her clothes. I took some time to develop that. As you can see here, I did my traceovers, found out where I needed design breaks of clothes and whatnot. Figured out how I wanted to fuse the Carmelita jacket corset into the crystal tribal bikini. The leather pants into the loincloth, the leg armor, etc. Now I'm tackling the final pose. Which again, I just... Go ahead with my first fucking idea instead of exploring more poses. Eventually, here I go into a new primary and slightly tweak it. And I do this off screen. I slightly tweak uh, the, this primary to make it look more like she's arching her back, leaning on her back leg, sort of posing. But it's it's not enough. It just it's overall it's very stiff. I eventually corrected some of this. In the final, final, final image. But it would have been better just to change it here, to be honest. I wanted a confident look. My head cannon for this character was, a, a as I said, a leader type. Um, a hero, a charismatic individual. Powerful, strong. You know, I've probably used those two words in every single video I've done so far. I wonder what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, poorly concealed proclivities aside, what we're dealing with is two hero types, two very outwardly good characters. Carmelita has her six foot thick sense of justice, and Crystal has her very kind and caring personality. I, I, I think. I still haven't actually looked up like anything about her, like watched cutscenes where she's interacting with other characters. I probably should fix that eventually. The way I see it, a combination of these two girls, once you you get uh, Carmelita's like rash, bold drive of justice combined with Crystal's more analytical thinking and caring, you get a, what is that? I see as like a superhero a type. A person who wants to save everybody. Who is like in a position of leadership. A symbol, a stereotypical savior. Most of Carmelita's more rough aspects, like her inflexibility and her general stupidity, are sort of erased. And Crystal's innate sort of main characterism, her hero is her heroism is heroinism, heroin, whatever. That feeling from her is magnified. So both parts they complement each other quite well. In fact, the result as a character, I would say, is almost of a Mary Sue in a way. No weaknesses, no flaws. Mm. Outside, of a, outside of the fusion perspective, where we would just evaluate the character in a vacuum, I would say a character like this would be monumentally predisposed to an excessive amount of pride. Maybe to the point of being a conceited bitch. I don't see much of that in Crystal or Carmelita, however. And we can't just add something that large. Perhaps she retains more of Carmelita's black and white worldview, but interprets it in a more political way, a manipulative way. I would say Crystal was a very social person. And that would be exacerbated by Carmelita's authority into being a politician type. 
charisma in excess can lead to a person being prone to be more manipulated by Snake, just innately. You tell I'm I'm trying to th- think of this. I'm trying to avoid thinking of everything as being on a linear scale of leaning this way or that way opposed to something else because there's a large number of those types of scales, but they intersect and affect one another. I prefer to just feel it out a bit, a sort of eyeballing it style of design. If it sounds right, sounds good, looks good, just run with it and see if you can steer away from any overt problems that come up. And if you fuck up and crash, you just, you know, start over. Rethink. And plus, I'm not really a fan of characters with just absolutely no flaws. It's it's shallow in a way. So I like to work in some weaknesses in my designs. Characters are made to face challenges within themselves. And those are the most difficult things that they struggle with in their stories. Because those types of challenges are the once regular people who are reading about that character can most relate to. So seeing someone overcome those types of inward problems are probably the most inspiring, to me at least. Hmm. That was a big aside, but anyways, the the pose still ended up being a bit too stiff. This character, um, naming-wise, it's like Crystalita or Carmosto. These names are always fucked. Um, it's it's really a character that needs to be striking the pose to match the personality. Really, I, really. Specifically, I think the jacket was probably my greatest concern, as I wanted to do something like striking and complicated, something well designed. I knew that there was a potential to like make something really cool looking. Some like heavy shoulder plate look, like an armor plate look, like as you can see I'm working on here. So I was like eager to figure that out, get in there and start playing around. I really like uh, like mini jackets on women, even if they are completely useless in function. As I said, I figured I would uh, interweave Crystal's armor plates into it so it would carry a more bulkier look. So I'm trying to like get a very stiff shoulder like military look to it as i said before that was probably my like rude aesthetic i had all along the thing about jackets jackets that don't really have anything on them like the jacket i gave carmelita in her own picture they tend to look very boring and they sort of say that the artist doesn't really know how to draw jackets so putting like anything on them like stitching pockets Put buttons, like patterns, whatever, or just interesting fabric folds, which are a bitch within themselves, can really, really make the design interesting. I don't think in any of the Carmelita art I looked at specifically, there was really much design to her jacket. It's just like a sort of orange yellow shape. So there wasn't really much I could do without just inventing something. But since then, or actually rather recently, I drew a picture of Miu Lynx from Star Fox 2. Star Fox 2. Where she had a jacket similar to Fox's jacket. And that was entertaining to design. All the numerous pockets, seams, and shoulder pads. It has a tactical look to it, which I really like. So I was like eager to jump back into that mindset I don't know really what I'm doing here. I think I went to the bathroom or something. However, in theory, I feel as though the jacket needs breaks on the upper arm somewhere. But exactly how I would go about doing that, I don't really know. Really, what I should have gone with is maybe a small vest of some kind. That's enough of a a detraction from the Carmelita jacket towards the crystal bikini, I think. Or maybe just like a short sleeve mini jacket. Which is probably the most useless piece of uh, clothing you can design. Regardless, I could have just added more visual bulk. 
I really just needed more visual bulk around the center, the torso, and then around the shoulders and the her gauntlets to sort of fuse all those aspects together. Ah, uh, hindsight. It does, uh, the jacket does end up looking very nice. It's not really bad at all. It just has too much Carmelita in it, I think. But, but, getting the outfit to match the character's personality is also just as important. And I'm not completely how sure like a vest or short sleeve thing would work with my concept of the character. I don't really see that kind of aesthetic working in a leadership, military commander type deal. To make that work, to make something like a vest or a short sleeve jacket work, that will require me to go back and maybe rethink my original idea for how I would do this fusion and sort of have a different endpoint in mind, which is valid, but this is the one I chose. Okay, going from there, we can just combine the corset and the tribal bikini in a few ways. Um, they're pretty similar in size, going from the small corset to the tiny bikini. There's a bit of a trend there, isn't there? Uh, we don't have a lot of design room to work with. There's a little, at least there's clothing on both characters this time, so I don't have to struggle. Unlike I had to do with Renamon's lack of decency. Eventually... I ended up with something about the size of Crystal's bikini, but I added sort of a more stiff metal look to it. I guess a cross between hard leather and cloth would be some type of stiff clothing, I suppose. In the end, I went for metal to tie back with the armor pieces on the jacket and the uh, leg armor. Originally, I had the, the chest as a sort of half-and-half half deal with, like, and you can see this on the final. You can see this better when I get to the uh, color portion. But I had metal bits on top with the corset material underneath. But eventually, I switched to the uh, half-metal cup <laughs> because I, I it just looked better, in my opinion. Plus, neither... Carmelita or Crystal have like a two-tone separation or something like that on their chest pieces. You you really have a lot of wiggle room when you do these things sometimes. So you don't have to be too rigid in a methodology of it has to be a 50-50 fusion. If you can just find a few reasons to tie the design choice back into the back into the design and don't really see any glaring reasons as why it's to just breaking the fusion. It's, I think it's better just to keep something that is just working with the design. Like the uh, strap across the shoulders, uh, across her lapel. It's not present in either design, but I think it really helps the outfit, in my opinion at least, adding to that uh, future aesthetic that I'm trying to go for. No clue how that works as an article of clothing, however. Maybe it hooks together under the pendant, or maybe maybe it's elastic, and you can pull on it, pull it back, and whip it, whip it like right the pendant right back into her face, and proceed to get your ass kicked. I'm not too sure on this skirt design. For a while, I had the skirt section, that white rectangular bit, separate from the underlying short section, but I fused them together uh, eventually after I found myself thinking that. Trying to retain the loincloth aspect from Crystal was just is just too silly and unfitting for the overall design. And that's a case of me leaning towards ideas I've already established, so it appears more cohesive. What is truly a an in-between between a pair of leather pants and a loincloth? I in the beginning I came up with a pair of shorts overlaid with a fabric piece that would sort of invoke that loincloth look, but what even, what even is that, honestly? That goes into, like, clothing itself, like pointless tassels, various decorations can give clothing a certain look, maybe leaning towards a culture vibe or cultural customs or just flat-out utility itself, and there's a lot of room to play around there, but you gotta avoid crossing a threshold that 
leads to just absolute stupidity. There's a notion of needing artistic sense there. Like if your guts say, hey, this looks stupid, you should probably listen. Even though you not might even understand what's bothering, bothering you about the image. You should at least explore the problem and see if you can develop a solution or at least identify what's fucking you up. In the end, I think the skirt sort of, it ended up looking fine. It has sort of like a formal fashion look to it. And while it doesn't make like like 100% use uh, sense in a utility sort of sense, but it does look believable as like an article of clothing that could theoretically exist. The gun, on the other hand, is probably the weakest aspect of the image. It has that look of, yeah, you didn't really try. You didn't try. And I can, I basically called that from the beginning. Gun, guns, uh, weaponry, most non-organic stuff is, is real rough for me to draw. I tend to rely on like a line tool for most of that process. But that gives me like this overly stiff look as I can't really control the line thickness as much as I want to so it stands out. So what you need there is uh, you need hand control and you need the ability to sort of imagine how, let's just imagine 3D forms in space, how the gun is rotated in, in perspective. And I'm so unsure of my ability in that respect because I'm just so inconsistent with it. Sometimes it looks decent, sometimes it looks all right, sometimes it just looks like shit. I have a, a lot, I have not a lot, I have no, almost no basic like formal training in those types of skills. I'm mostly self-taught. And with those, you practice mostly via like drawing 3D shapes like cubes and rotating them across the page over like maybe a dozen or so images. And you do like lots of like parallel line work and you're just building like very foundational stuff. And those types of, that type of practice, that type of stuff is, it's a very, very, very dry and very boring. Not at all like drawing a big old pair of tits. As such, I skip it a lot or I just half-ass it. I mostly have skills now that sort of let me do that via just looking at it. I don't really have a, I have like an innate sense that I'm not really active in thinking about or so it just, it just happens and I'm just like, Oh, well, I don't know how I did that, but that's how I do it. Um, then I have other skills that sort of hide my shortcomings. So I just stray away from doing things I specifically know I can't, can't do. Those are all definitely things I need to fix, but making time for grunt work practice never really works out. You always, I'm always able to sort of weasel my way out of it. Hopefully one day I'll actually start focusing more on that. Anyways, I think everyone can sort of break down my thought process on the gun. Staff plus handgun equals uh, the function of a gun plus the shape of a staff. A rifle, basically. This is something I could almost do its own concept concept page for and should have done flat out. But I, I sort of gave up before I even tried. Very infuriating to look back on my lazy self, but I have this list of things I suck at. And very rarely I'll pick something off that list to work on. Usually doesn't go well. Usually sort of give up. Art is something, art is something you, you can always find something you suck at within the uh, subject. Anyways, if I were to go back to it, I would add more of the more details. Those uh, glowing color lines and stuff. Carl Carmelita's gun is just so cartoony, I can't pull much from it. So a lot of the detail would need to be pulled from Crystal's staff. And I may just go back and try to work on that if it ends up bothering me enough. On a whole, um, the design is probably too Carmelita. The biggest offender being the hair color. Her facial structure is different from what I drew on Carmelita, but that's not really enough, unfortunately, to pull it away from the Carmelita look. I think Carmelita's hair 
has a very specific look to it and shape and color. And it's a very strong Carmelita vibe. Sort of like how on the image of Crystal versus uh, Crystal Fuse with Renamon, I gave uh, that fusion's head too, it was too much towards Renamon, or maybe it was just, just right in the center, but giving her the black Scalera just pushed it. It just, it, it adds so much Renamon to it that you just need to remove that to get back to the an actual fusion. And here it's the, the hair color. The hair color just needs to be something else to sort of pull it away from the Carmelita look. I can't really do too much about that, however. I have a... I have, my color range is from a crystals like um, saturated blue to Carmelita's like saturated dark blue, slightly purple. And there's only so many colors I can make the hair so it fits in with the rest of the image. So it's just something I can't really work with, unfortunately. I could maybe tie it back into the... I could lower the saturation a lot so it matches the skirt and gloves. That could probably work, maybe. Color is another thing I'm not incredibly well-versed in and also need a ton of practice on. Let's see, is there anything else? I don't normally talk about this, I think. But in terms of the body type, I think her breasts are probably far too large. Uh, instead of being an in-between of Crystal and Carmelita, I think I went additive here. The same for her thighs, which are almost ridiculously monstrous in the, like a bodybuilder way. And I, I guess she just does nothing but squats all day. Anyways, uh, this was part six of the Crystal Carmelita Renamon Trifusion series which at this point has gone on way too long. I started back in, I think it was before the Patreon started, so like August or September. Seven Parts is just, it has that grand ambition feeling to it, which is something I can't really deliver on with my current skill set. In the future, I'm probably dropping the once a month bullshit and just doing each picture and video back to back as in make the first picture make the video for it upload it then move on to the next just to maintain a cohesive thought pattern throughout the entire set of videos so maybe i can talk about things across specific videos or delegate each video to speaking about a different part of the process i probably won't do what i did this time and make an individual picture and video for each base character I'm using. Maybe. I don't know. Those are actually easier in a way and more interesting, honestly. I can style them as like video essays and make the commentary about what I think of the character themselves. And people more care about that because they sort of already know the character and they'll stick around for a lot of the video. Something I've been keenly aware about is that these videos themselves aren't really like generating buzz among my fan base. And, and bef I'll say before I get into this, I have a pretty good understanding about how well this type of content is going over with people and how like the YouTube algorithm works and how willing people are to like sit down for 30 minutes and to watch a person speak poorly. So more than 10 views on any of these is amazing. More than 100 views is amazing. But I would like to generate more views if possible. So I have more of a excitement to do this, I guess. I don't really have a benchmark for this other than what I've done already personally or what I've seen other people doing, doing a Trifusion art videos. There aren't a lot of those. It's, it's basically just plague. Everyone else is either not doing any sort of commentary on their uh, Trifusion art or they're effectively non-existence. 
as in almost zero views, and I won't name anybody. Now for just like fusion videos, in the sense of it's a speed paint video, just an artist fusing two or more characters together, there are a lot of those. I did a quick search on YouTube and saw a ton of people to it, so it's it's a thing. Just a five minute, ten minute process video of just the artist, and it's done. What I'm trying to do is provide commentary on my thought process of the ordeal of creation in terms of style, uh, my art process, my designing process, how I'm tackling the problems that arise when I'm doing the fusing. That's interesting to me. And listening to me, listening to an artist break down their thoughts, it's like a behind the scenes pullback of the art. And that's That's like a form of long-form commentary. And the success of that, how popular it is, is based on a few things. Mostly the interest level of the viewer on the subject, the knowledge of the subject by the speaker, and the personality of the speaker. The biggest thing there is personality. If you like the uh, person on the other end, you'll listen to their ass narrate a damn phone book. I don't know really what I can say about my personality. I'm not really trying to be too different from myself, so I don't know that how that's going to work with me. That being said, this whole thing is more of an art analysis for myself. Just something different to struggle with instead of just bashing my head against art all the time. And it's almost over. Not the video. Well, the video is almost over, but this whole seven-part saga. I never really thought I would get this far, so that's something to be proud of. My, my catalog of videos of Me watching myself draw fetish bait while trying to vomit words all over it. Maybe one day this will be all I do. Probably not. Hopefully not. But I've read and heard that if you pursue what really makes you happy creatively, that that will be successful in the long run. I'm not sure where I'm at yet in that regards, but I am looking forward to being done with this whole thing so I can at least look back and say, hey, I made this and this is cool. Anyway, in summation, this is probably the best of all the fusion de- designs, barring if I just knock the final one out of the park. It did get a little bit away from me at the end. I ended up with a, like a start fleet captain or some shits. One of my patrons made an allusion to the image evoking a USSR feel, which I'm slightly okay with, most because it's funny. And speaking of patrons, you should be one. You can go support me on my Patreon, a link nowhere because of this minute, and for one dollar or five bucks a month, uh, you, the first tier is basically nothing, um, but the second gets you early access to various uh, things I'm making, you know, works in progress. I posted a works, uh, works in progress of this and of the Patreon polls. Um, the Patreon polls are monthly art polls. I run, I put like fandom characters or my own characters in there and people can vote on which ones I draw. It's not a lot for your money, but Hey, 12 bucks a year from several dozen <laughs> thousand people will keep me pumping out whatever it is I do for years to come and always you can uh, go find my galleries wherever Twitter, FA, and DeviantArt and follow me there for mostly smut Uh, but whatever it is you end up doing, I thank you for sticking around for the entire video or just randomly skipping to that part, that is impressive have a good one guys I'll talk to y'all later in a final fusion bye